Okay, so uh, before moving on to tangent lines, there are a few small important concepts that you guys should get down before it gets a little complicated, right? So there's this one question that you almost get, well, every year uh, in your midterms as well as your finals that talks about the relationship between differentiability and continuity. Well, we remember defining continuity as uh, something that was defined by three rules, right? Uh, if we just recall that, um, the idea was that if a function f is continuous at a, then f of a has to exist. And the second was that the limit, right, at x approaching a for f of x has to exist. And then the third condition, well, I'm pretty sure you guys must remember that the first value is equal to the second value. So the idea is that the limit has to equal the function value, right? And if this is true, then the function is basically continuous. But the problem is that when you have a function that's differentiable, it kind of automatically implies this. So if I were to give like a short proof of that, how would that go? The, so basically what I'm saying is that f is a differentiable function, right? And f is differentiable at a, right? And uh, if f is differentiable at a, then basically what that means is that f dash a has to be represented by what I'm about to write. So basically, this statement we've talked about it so many other times f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a has got to represent f dash a so the definition that we've done previously it talked about q approaching a but it doesn't really matter because i remember saying and uh, telling you guys constantly that it's basically an arbitrary value that's getting closer and closer to a right so it could be any value it could be q or x but x makes it simpler because we're doing it because it's more official right because we've dealt with x as a variable uh, so much when we've been calculating limits in the previous videos right so getting back to the point this limit represents that right so if i were to th talk about it for a second um is there any way i can um perhaps um reiterate this and see what happens if i do so so Let's try that out. What if I bring f dash x to the other side? I would be able to re-express my limit as f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a minus f dash of a equals zero, right? That's not rocket science. It's just saying that you're taking this to the left, like a left hand side. What's to follow? I, let's see what happens then. So if we try to like uh, make this part of the limit, then we're gonna have to like multiply this by x minus a, right? If we were to even consider it for a second. So basically, if we try to take the LCM of this problem, we're gonna end up with f of x minus f of a, this times x minus a, because that's the uncommon term over here, right? So we will end up with minus x minus a times f of f dash of a, right? Because we brought it to this side. And this entire thing has to be divided by x minus a, right? And this has to be equal to zero. So what does this represent at this point is the main question. So what we can get at this point is that, from this point, is that f of x is getting closer and closer to f of a. And if this fact turns out to be true, then we know for a fact that the function value would exist course and the limit would exist and the limit would equal the function value because this is getting closer and closer to that so using this logic the differentiability of f of x at x equals a implies its continuity now this is very important if you have a function that's differentiable then only that implies its continuity at a point obviously this has to be applied to a point right it's a function is just differentiable at a point Let's call it a point A, and that just reflects that its continuity is maintained at a point A. This is a very important rule, and it's often misused. How is it misused? Well, people tend to use it from this side to that side. If they establish that a function is continuous, they try to establish that it's uh, differentiable, which is not exactly correct. It's completely false. A function may be continuous, but it may not be differentiable. But at the same time, a function may have, if, if a function is differentiable, it will have to be continuous as well. So I'm going to do an example now that's going to illustrate exactly that. So we know what the absolute value function looks like, right? We've talked about it 
a little before. So fx equals absolute value of x gives us a function that's kind of representative of this graph over here. That's what we're getting, right? So basically, that's uh, the absolute value function. So the idea is that we're trying to determine continuity at x equals 0. So let's just do that. That's not very hard to establish, right? So we know that uh, if we were to divide this into a piecewise function, as we did in the previous videos, x is for x is less than 0, the function that we will use in the limit is uh, y. Well, not exactly y, but x, f of x equals x, right? And for x equals 0, it's just 0. And for x is greater than 0, it's x. My apologies, I meant to say minus x. Minus x because since the value of x is less than 0, we are trying to establish that we get a positive value by multiplying a negative sign. So if you refer to the previous video on the absolute value function, you guys will uh, understand this concept right now. But the idea right now is to establish that continuity holds at x equals 0, right? So for continuity to hold at x equals 0, we must know that f of 0 exists and we know that it exists. We simply plug in a zero, we see that zero is a point over here, and we get a zero. What's the second condition? Well, the second condition asks us to test whether the limit as x approaches a particular number. Now, what's that number again? It's basically x approaching zero, right? So, does this limit exist? Well, for this to exist, we're going to have to consider the left-handed and the right-handed limit. So, if we try to think about it, when you're approaching it from the left-hand side and the right-hand side, it's giving us the exact same answer, which is giving us a limit existing at this point right so it's not really any and now the third step is to actually show that this is equal to that and as it turns out two does in fact give us that two does in fact give us zero so now that we've proved like proof continuity let's check if it's differentiable what would we need to do if we want to check its differentiability right basically i'm going to use a simpler uh, method over here i'm going to try to find f of x plus h minus f of uh, x divided by h basically right and i'm going to find the limit as h approaches zero for this particular value right and if this turns out to give me something right and uh, i'm going to try to approach it from the left hand and the right hand because i want to determine the gradient of the line that's trying to form itself from the left to the right and the line that's try trying to form itself from this point to onwards right so let's try to do that over here so let's try and do that um, we know what the absolute value function looks like, right? So we're going to try to approach it from the left hand and the right hand side, as I talked about earlier. So let's approach it from the left hand side for f of x plus h and f of x divided by h, right? We know that for x is less than zero, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're moving towards it from the left hand side. Um, f of x is simply going to give us that right but we need to simplify this now we need to convert this to a minus x right and uh, f of x plus h is going to give us what f of x plus h is going to give us x plus h in this particular case and we're going to take the absolute value of this now that we have these two values let's try to well determine if this is actually going to help us so when we try to approach this from the left hand side we get uh, absolute value of x plus h right and absolute value of x over here so there's this general rule that you guys should know um if we are if you have something like this we can use the triangle inequality not necessarily the triangle inequality but something similar to that so we can just separate out the terms and that gives us limit as h approaches zero from the left hand side absolute value of x plus absolute value of h minus absolute value of x so if you think about it the x's would cancel out and what i end up with is this which is very interesting for me now the idea is that for a, we have h right but the idea is that for x is less than zero the absolute value of x would give me minus x right for x is greater than zero absolute value of x would give me plus x but the problem is over here i have h right so i'm going to use the exact same logic for that i'm going to plug in a minus h because i'm approaching it from the left hand side Let's do that. I, might, I get minus h over h. I know I can cancel these both out because even if it's approaching 0 from the left-hand side, it doesn't really matter. Why does it matter? Because it never gets equal to 0 over 0. It gets very close to it. So this would result in the limit of minus 1. What? And think about this for a second. 
What if we approach zero from the right? Well, we're going to get the exact same thing, but there's going to be an issue. Since we're moving from like the positive end of the x-axis, the absolute value of any number, be it x, y, I don't know, a million, it was going to give us an x, simply an x, a positive x. So over here, the absolute value of h is going to give us a positive h, which would result in this expression, h over h where the h's cancel out and we get a value plus one. Now, if you recall, we've talked about the left-handed limit not being equal to the right-handed limit. And if this is the case, then the limit does not exist, right? That is exactly the case over here, guys. The left-handed limit is not equal to the right-handed limit, which is basically saying that the derivative as you're moving from the left-hand side towards zero is negative one, and the derivative as you're moving from the right side to the left side is positive one. Which is saying what? Which is simply saying that the derivatives aren't equal at the point zero. If we try to think about a small interval over here, then they're not equal. And this is very important to consider because if you think about it, the gradient is positive over here, is negative over here, and positive over here. So if we think about the small interval and kind of zoom into it, we get a V. We don't get one particular line that is representative of the derivative we get two lines which are contradictory, which means that the derivative does not exist at the point x equals zero. So why did we do all this? We did this to prove that a graph or a function can be continuous but may not be differentiable. However, if a function is differentiable at all its points, it has to be continuous. That's the basic bottom line that you guys need to take away from this video. So I will hopefully be seeing you in the next video. Uh, we're going to be discussing some important rules of differentiation before moving on to the chain rule and finally ending this module with uh, the tangent line and linear approximation section.